Hello lovely people, my name is Fluorescent Zebra, and I am a bit obsessed by things that are striped. If you've ever played modded Minecraft and been intrigued by bees, this is definitely the place for you. Bees are one of my favorite parts of Minecraft, and I'd like to talk a little bit about how they function and how they can enhance your own game. Now, this particular tutorial, hopefully the first of several, is only going to cover the apiculture aspect of forestry, which is a mod for modded Minecraft. I'm not going to cover any of the other parts of forestry. They're all fantastic, but the bees are what I like the best. So this is the first part of a whole. And if you want to learn everything there is to know about forestry, you can get yourself a forester's manual and read through it. There's a lot of information available online as well, especially about some of the more complicated machines. But today we're going to be focusing on those machines that have to deal with specifically bees, breeding them, keeping them happy, and exploiting their produce. So let's get started by talking about some of the ores that are going to be available in the world when you have forestry. So there are four main ores in forestry, appetite, copper, tin, and bronze. Appetite, copper, and tin are found just anywhere in the world where you would find stone or iron. You can find any of these guys. Appetite's bright blue. Usually you see it in extreme hills. And it spawns in veins of between 15 and 80. So you get quite a bit of it. It can be fortuned, much like lapis. And it's used like fertilizer with sand very useful ore to have. Copper and tin, more traditional, a bit like iron, but they can be blended to make bronze. And any game that has the base forestry has access to this recipe, which is just made with ingots. There are some mod packs that are going to take this out of the game or change how it works. So if you don't see it in your pack, don't be alarmed. That's probably on purpose. But if you're playing with just forestry, you will always have access to this particular method of making bronze. So while you're keeping an eye out in the world for these guys, you're also going to keep your eye out for hives. But to get the contents of the hives, you're going to want a few things to take with you. First of which are scoops. Scoops allow you to break a hive and actually get the bees out of it safely. If you break a hive without a scoop, it won't drop anything. Here's how a scoop is made, a few sticks, and a piece of wool. It can be any color wool, it doesn't have to be white, and they do not stack, so keep that in mind when you're filling your backpack full of them. Here we have the smoker, a little bit of tin, leather, flint and steel, stick. The smoker will calm the bees in the hive so they don't sting you while you're scooping them out. couple of other useful things. The apris backpack, which is made with an apris chest. An apris just means beekeeper. To make the chest with a chest, some glass and honeycombs. You can use any honeycomb in any combination to make the chest. They're completely or dictionary. And the backpack made similar to most of the other backpacks in forestry. Some string, sticks, wool, and the apris chest. Now this backpack is amazingly useful if you have it in your inventory and you pick up some bees in the world. They'll go straight into the backpack and not clog up your inventory. This is very important because most of the bees are not going to stack. We'll talk a little bit about that later. There are several instances that control whether or not they will stack. But trust me, you're going to want to have two, maybe three of these on you if you're going hunting. Now what are you looking for? Well, you're looking for striped hives. The two most common ones are a forest hive and the meadows hive. Now these are found in any grassy plain or grassy biome, forest, um, you'll see them in roof forests. And they're going to drop princesses, drones, and honeycombs. Now whenever you break a hive you always get at least one princess or one drone. You've got the chance of getting a second one and a honeycomb. So don't be alarmed if you don't get two out of every hive. It happens. 
So forest hives are going to be in trees. They're going to be attached to leaves. Meadow hives will always be on the ground. Sometimes it looks like they're not because they're stuck on a hillside, but I promise they're always touching grass. Now, forest and meadow bees, like all bees, need to have a flower. They'll use any regular small flower in the game. They will not use too high flowers. So any of these, you know, poppies, the little blue lilies you get in swamps, dandelions, any of those guys will work. Now, warm climate bees, like these modest bees here from the desert biome, they eat cactus. You can see they drop parched combs. And marshy bees, they use mushrooms. Now they use small mushrooms, not large mushrooms. So if your mushroom grows up, chop it down, plant some more little ones. I had to put a piece of string on top of mine to keep them from, you know, getting out of hand. And these, of course, drop marshy combs, marshy bees. Cold bees, wintry bees. You'll find them in extreme hills. Find them in uh, snowy biomes. They eat snow. And yes, that is snow layers. So you'll want to have some of that on hand as well. Tropical bees. you find these only in jungles. These spawn the same like um, forest bees. They're going to be in trees. They blend in really, really well. Forest bees are the only wild bees that have a status condition when they sting you. They do cause you to be poisoned. So you definitely want a smoker when you go after these guys. And they eat light uh, vines. I forgot what it's called. End bees. You'll only find them in the end biome. Their hives are a little bit ender mini. And yes, they do in fact use a dragon egg. So we'll talk about that. There's some mods that make changes to it. But if you've got just forestry in your pack, you're going to want that egg. All right. Well, now that you've got your bees from out in the world, you're going to want a place to put them. The easiest place for you to put them is probably a bee house. Bee houses are made very simply. Regular planks, regular slabs, and whatever honeycombs you have lying around. A bee house is a very simple interface. Your princesses go here, your drones go here. They breed together to make queens. And anything they produce goes over here. Now, bee houses are a little bit lacking because they don't allow you to mutate bees. And mutation is what your end goal is in bees. You're going to take the wild bees that you find that produce basic combs and turn them into bees that produce anything that a mob drops, for instance. So pretty quickly you're going to want to move up from the bee house to the apiary. Apiary is probably the thing you'll make the most. It has the same slots for the princesses and the drones and the same output slots, but it has these three slots here. And we're going to put frames in those. But before we can put frames in them, we got to figure out how do we make an apiary? Well, you make it very similarly with some planks and some slabs, but with an impregnated casing. Now an impregnated casing is going to require a couple of other machines to make because it's made with logs and seed oil. Now, if you're going to make one, you're going to need a carpenter and a squeezer. The squeezer just squeezes seeds for seed oil. As you can see, I'm just using wheat seeds. It will also work with melon seeds, pumpkin seeds, beetroot seeds, and if you're using Pam's Harvest Craft, it will work with any of the Pam seeds. It's usually what I use. And squeezer is actually a pretty easy recipe. It's made with a sturdy casing, some tin and some glass. Sturdy casings, it's just a bunch of bronze, like a chest. Once you've got your seed oil, you're gonna make a carpenter. Carpenters run on various fluids, this one on seed oil, obviously, and it uses whatever wood you have, and you can use any wood in the game, all the woods from forestry. Um, I've used woods from Biomes of Plenty, so whatever wood you have laying around in a group of eight will make an impregnated casing. It does take a little while to produce, but once you've made a few of them, you can have your little apiary empire up and running in no time. So let's talk about the frames. Frames are good 
in your apiaries because they're going to help your bees. They're going to make them more productive and they're going to make them less inclined to genetically decay. We'll talk about genetics in a bit. So don't worry about it too much for now. Mostly what you're looking for in, pr in frames is production. So this first one, this is an untreated frame. Just sticks and string gives you a little bit of protection. Twice as much production, just like the other frames. Genetic decay is 0.9, so it's slightly decreased. And durability of 80. These break very quickly. Next frame is going to be an impregnated frame. Just like the impregnated casing, this is going to use seed oil. You're going to use these impregnated sticks and a string in the middle to make the impregnated frame. So, the same production value, definitely less decay, almost half as much net decay, and over twice as much durability. They still break fairly quickly. Now there's one more frame. You actually can't craft this frame. This is a proven frame. It's one of the best ones in the game. Same production rate, but the gen decay is 0.3 and the durability is 720. These last absolutely forever. You have to buy these guys. And you'll buy them from an Apex villager. Now, if you've had forestry in a game and you've gone into a village, sometimes you'll see a house made out of odd looking wood. Now those are the specialty woods that you can breed in forestry. And all of those houses have a chance to have an apiarist. They also might have one of the green tree guys. But you're looking for the yellow coats. Apiarists have several different trades. You can see here we've got wheat for stringy combs. The first three will always be for combs of some variety. And it's always wheat, carrots, and potatoes. After that, you always have a smoker. I've seen this as low as one emerald, so if you're having trouble finding the thing, what you need to make it, you can always buy one. And then apiaries, which are emeralds plus some logs. So if you don't have a lot of seeds, a good way to get started with these guys. You can always trade in drones and some propolis, which is a byproduct of centrifuging. We'll talk about that for tropical drones. You can trade in princesses for emeralds. I don't recommend this. We'll talk about why. And then here's our important thing, emeralds for proven frames. Now I have seen as much as one emerald for six of these guys. So if you don't find the apiarist you need, set up a villager breeder and get to work. Um, there are a couple trades after this. You can trade in a princess and a number of emeralds for a monastic drone. Monastics can only be purchased. They're never found in the wild or bred. So you will eventually want some of these guys, depending on what bees you're trying to breed. And if you don't want to go to the end, princesses, eyes of ender will always get you some ender drones. If you have enough of them, you can breed an ender queen. So that's enough out of you, sir. Thank you for your time. We'll move on. With your apiaries, you're going to have just a few things to notice and pay attention to. If you see a red mark, that means that there's a problem. The bee's not working for some reason. This particular bee has no flowers nearby. Since there are no flowers to pollinate, the bees can't work. This one has a few more complications. It's too dry here. This is a tropical bee, which is used to a humid environment. And it's also too cold. So we're looking for humid and hot, like a jungle would be. He also has no flowers. So you can look over here and see what the temperature and the humidity levels around these particular apiary are. And because we're in a plain biome, it's normal on both sides. And this particular machine does not require any power, so it's not going to tell us the power levels. And it says, who put this down? So our end goal for bees is eventually to get an alvary. Now, alvary is going to solve some of our problems. If you're trying to breed wintry bees or tropical bees in a plane, your bees are not going to work because they're in the wrong biome. But with an alvary, which is this lovely multi-block structure here, we can add modifications and make the bees think that they're in the right place. Now, alvary is actually a pretty complicated machine, I guess you'd say. You're going to need bees before you get there. 
And the reason is, alfreys are made with scented paneling. Scented paneling is made with royal jelly and pollen clusters, both of which come from a particular breed of bee. Royal jelly are going to come from, we call imperial bees. Pollen clusters are going to come from industrious. And there's a little bit of breeding to get to before then. I'll show you the basic ones. And you're going to need a lot of scented paneling around an impregnated casing to make a single alvary block. And for each alvary, you need 27. So the top line are the Imperials. It's a noble, majestic. Breed them together, and you have a chance to get an Imperial Queen. And here on the bottom, we have Diligent and Unweary, which are going to breed together to make Industrious. We'll get into genetics and talk about it more. There are ways to improve your chances. And we'll talk about bee products. In order to make any of these, you're going to need honey. You get honey from throwing honeycomb through a centrifuge. Honey and beeswax. Different types of combs are going to give you different products. So these are the two that you get most often. You make a centrifuge pretty easy, just some copper, a sturdy casing, and some glass. You might want to make up a few of those. And get yourself another squeezer to put all the honey drops through. Um, with dripping combs, you'll also get honeydew, which can be squeezed for honey as well. And a byproduct, which is this propolis here. Once you've made your basic alvary blocks, these are the modifications that you can make. This first one is a swarmer. Swarmer is pretty nice because it allows your alvary to produce hives on the side that you can break to get more bees. A little bit of gold, alvary block, and some diamantine electron tubes. We'll talk about electron tubes in a minute. They're made with a different machine. So this may be one of the first blocks you get just so that you can get more bees to play with. This guy right here is an alvary fan. The fan is going to cool the hive off. You see golden electron tube, alvary, a little bit of iron right here as a fan. This is a powered block. It does require RF to run. So remember that when you're placing it in the 3x3 block. Same with the heater. So after cooling becomes heating. Stone. Golden electron tubes, again, always the alvary block. And after that, we're going to go with the hydro, uh, high grow regulator. This is one of the most complex blocks that you can put in your alvary. You pump liquid into it, and depending on what you pump into it, it can make your environment warm and humid or cold and humid. So if you just need it a little bit more humid, you're going to want to pump water into it. But if you need it hot and humid, for instance, to breed tropicals, you're probably going to want to pump lava into it. And it's made glass, iron, and an alvary block. The stabilizer prevents genetic decay. You always want to put one of these in your alvaries. Nether quartz, alvary. And the last block you can make is the sieve. Now, if if you want to collect pollen from your bees, which you can then use to go down the arborist route in forestry and breed trees, you're going to want a sieve. A sieve is made from woven silk. We're going to talk about that in a minute because you need it for bees as well. An alvary, a little bit of iron. But this will catch pollen clusters that your bees collect from nearby trees. And it does need to be forestry trees or vanilla trees that have been turned into forestry trees. So to make the electron tubes, to make all of these blocks, you're going to want a thermionic fabricator. Thermionic fabricator takes glass, melts it down, and this particular one is making golden electron tubes. But you can click on these gears to show you all the different recipes. Um, the most common are made with diamonds, made with blaze powder. And it's always this five material structure with a little bit of redstone. You get four every single time. So the thermionic fabricator, a little bit more complicated of a name, very easy to make. 
chest, some glass, this really sturdy casing again, a little bit of gold. Now I will tell you in a lot of versions of forestry, if you leave the recipe in here and you do not have any of the components down here to make the recipe, the thermionic fabricator will continue to drain power. It will also continue to melt this glass. So when you're finished with it, take everything out. I have a creative power source on it, so I'm not terribly worried about it. But trust me, you do not want to come back to your system drained because you forgot to kill the recipe. You can kill the recipe by right clicking on the blocks. Ta-da! Now, to get the woven silk that you need, you're going to want a lot of silky combs. Silky combs come from tropical bees. When you put them through the centrifuge, they give you silky propolis the first time. And if you run silky propolis through, you're going to get silk wisps, a little bit of regular propolis as a byproduct. Take all those silk wisps, put them in a carpenter with some water, and it'll make woven silk for you. Woven silk is very useful. Use it to upgrade all the bags in forestry. You also use it as you saw to make the sieve and more especially use it to make armor. This armor does not protect you very well from anything else in the game but it protects you from bees and it's made just like vanilla armor. It has slightly less protection ability than I believe gold armor but bees can't get into it, so you won't feel the effects of bees. In your early beekeeping days, you might not notice. Most of the regular bees don't have effects, but when you're messing with your tropicals, you'll notice you get poisoned quite a bit. And when you breed more dangerous bees, there are effects like aggressive. Well, they will go out of their way to attack anything and everything. This does include passive mobs. And there are some effects like ends, which is more aggressive, if that's possible. There are bees that can blind you. I, as far as I know, there are no bees in base forestry that will spawn mobs on your head. But a lot of the augmented mods, like magic bees, will definitely spawn them on your head. You don't want to have a creeper spawn on your head. I promise you that. Not a pleasant day. So make sure you get some bee armor as fast as you can. You want to own a couple of other things. You're going to want this portable analyzer, which is made in a carpenter. Tin, glass, diamond, and redstone. Now the portable analyzer is going to run, grab it out of here, on these honey drops. You can turn it into an actual block analyzer if you want. And this is just a sturdy casing and some bronze. And you can take that and make a database. An arborist chest, an apiarist chest. The database just holds more items. It does take a royal jelly. So it will be a while before you can make that. And if you want to make an arborist chest, it's exactly like the bee chest but with saplings. The analyzer allows you to run bees through it. Whereas the portable analyzer is handheld, this one can be automated, which is why it's very nice. And the database, of course, just as a repository for your bees. We're going to grab a couple of these guys out. Now is the time where we talk about bee genetics. So every bee that you find is going to have a particular genetic profile. So let's throw the valiant bee in here. Valiant is a bee that you can find from any wild hive. It may drop in place of any of the bees that you can get. And this actually remains true in all of the augmented mods that add on to it. Magic bees, more bees, bennies. Valiants are fairly useful because they give you cocoa comb and sugar. Which is nice to have early in the game, especially if you haven't found a jungle yet. And as you can see, this bee's got a very long lifespan, which means when you put it into a hive and let it run, it will last a lot longer than other bees. Its production is slow, however. 
Now, all, everything that you see here is a trait that the bee has, and it can pass these traits on to its offspring. The ones in blue are going to be things that are highly desired. The ones in red, not so much. So slow production means that those cocoa combs that are so highly prized, you're not gonna get but maybe one or two a generation. Pollination is how often it makes more flowers appear. So if you have a beehive set up and say you have a poppy next to it, you may come back later and find that you've got 10 or 15 poppies scattered around. Trust me, if you're not careful, you can cover your entire plains with one flower. I like to set up several flowers just for variety. And you can pick them up and use them for dye or use them for other products or sell them. Just know that whatever your pollination speed is, you're going to get flowers from that. The flower type tells you what you're looking at. So this uses regular flowers. There are others such as, uh, I think we'll see it in a minute with the demonic bee, nether flowers. Nether flowers are a nether wart. Was it the end flower? Unless you have one of those augmented mods that changes it, the end flower is always going to be the dragon egg. And you'll see some that are stones or rocks and other packs. Fertility is how many drones it has. At the end of its, each life cycle, a queen is going to produce one princess and a number of drones. That number of drones is between one and four. Territory is how big of an area around the beehive this bee is going to travel. I do not have exact numbers for the for the territories. The average seems to be about a six by six around the hive. The largest tends to be about a chunk. This is going to become important when you have bees that have very strong effects because if someone comes to visit you and they're not wearing a bee suit, they might not enjoy your lovely little friends. And this particular bee has no effect. Now you'll notice that there's multiple genetic information available. So tier one's just general overall, tier two's environment. So this particular bee likes a normal climate, like a plane, and its tolerance level is whether or not you can put it in a slightly colder, slightly warmer biome and see how it does. This particular tolerance is zero. Now I have seen it uh, plus or minus two, which means that we could, um, if it was a plus one, we could take it to a savanna and it would still be okay. If it were a minus one, we could take it to like an extreme hills and it would still be all right. We look at humidity tolerance is how damp the environment can be. So normal like a plains and with the tolerance level again plus or minus two you look at deserts are going to be very very arid very dry whereas jungles and swamps very very wet this is important for the bee because it will not work if you don't have it in a good tolerance area diurnal whether or not it works during the day most of them do nocturnal flies at night the valiant is one of the few that does so be warned. Tolerant flyer means whether or not it flies in the rain. Most bees do not. Cave dwelling. Cave dwelling means that you can take this bee and you can put the apiary underground and the valiant bee will still work. Most bees require direct access to the sun or the sky as they say and it will tell you that the sky is obstructed and not work. So cave dwelling bees are highly prized. Go down to the third one, which is our products. We get a cocoa comb and sometimes some sugar. And we can also look at mutations. So there's only one mutation in base forestry. And we haven't discovered it yet because we haven't bred it. There's only one other way to discover them. And that's with the Esquitar table, which we'll talk about. And you get down here and get a little bit of information. 
So this is always just trivia. It's nothing important that you need to know. It's kind of fun to look at it sometimes, try to pronounce those entertaining words. And now we'll look at this demonic bee. Demonic bee has a little bit different skill set. It uses this and other flowers I talked about, and it has an effect called flammable. This means that things near it will randomly catch fire. So not all of these have tooltips. Sometimes mods add them in so you can mouse over the effect and get an idea of what it does. Uh, forestry bees don't. And you can look them up on the wiki to see what they do. Or you can put the bee in and be surprised. So this has a, oops, a little bit different products. You get glowstone dust and simmering combs. Useful bee to have. So those are a little bit about the bee genetics. And I've got a few alvaries over here that are running. And this one has an awful lot of different blocks set up in it. It's because I've got tropical bees in here. And because I have these heaters to keep it and, and the hydro regulators. Oops. Now it's telling me it's too dry because my hydro regulators are empty. <laughs> And now our bee is happy and flying and able to work. This one's got a noble bee in it, so we're one step closer to getting our Imperials. This one is cultivated. Move these guys over. And over here you've got some common drones. And you'll see the bees these guys have started to work. Come out and buzz around. A little bit like flying confetti. And they'll come around with different flowers, whatever flower they prefer, and you'll see them. And you can see with these common drones that are flying around, the drones are almost always colored exactly like the bees are, so they're easy to tell apart. And those are just a bunch of alvaries working side by side. So you can see you have different bees from different environments that are working with the appropriate parts. Now, you can also automate with machines, usually from other mods, these, these apiaries. I'm using XNet for this one. And I have filters set up. If you're not familiar with XNet, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a fantastic system. But for this particular one, I am taking the bees out of here, putting them back in. I'm taking out of here the combs, running them through the centrifuge, and then putting the produce back in here. So very, very easy setup and system. Right. One other item of concern is the bees that you find in the wild come in two varieties. You have your pristine bees and then you have your ignoble bees. The difference in these two is going to come up when you are breeding them. Ignoble bees will die out after a hundred generations or so. There's a random number generator that kicks in after so many times and you might come back to your hive one day and the bees will just not have produced a princess anymore. Pristine bees don't have that problem. So the first thing I like to do after I go out in the world and hunt down my bees is separate out the pristine princesses from the ignoble princesses. The ignoble princesses I do sometimes trade to an apiarist if I need a few extra emeralds. But mostly I use these with other mods to do things with and we'll talk about in future videos. Drones. You're going to get a ton of them over time. Drones are the only ones that stack as you can see. None of these princesses are stacking. Now, if you have a set of drones that don't stack, it means they have different genetic makeups. So like when we were looking at the portable analyzer, you're going to find that some of them are subtly different, which you get from breeding. 
So when you're breeding to get particular mutations, keep that in mind. So if your drones aren't stacking, there's maybe a reason. Look it up in the analyzer and breed the bees with the most desirable traits together to see what you get. So that's it for this particular bee tutorial. So I hope everyone out there is able to get started and breed up your fantastic bee empire. I do have a link in the description that shows my particular spreadsheet for the different bee breeding. Now this is a spreadsheet that does include all of the different mods that add on to forestry as well as the basic forestry bees. And there are some bees that can only be bred in very particular circumstances like certain times of year for holidays and things. So keep that in mind when you're looking at them. There's a note section as well. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. I love to talk about bees. I love to help people with bees. And most of all, I just love to be. So lovelies, have a fantastic day and thanks for